there are some good people out here that, you, that we deal with that they're really kind, generous. A lot of the situations we've all been in, you know, we've all been in that same boat. I like my job. <laughs> we are responsible for everybody on this bus. It makes me feel really good at, you know, at being responsible for the, for the safety of the people. And I think a lot of people that live in this town take advantage of the bus too, for a number of different reasons, but you great access. It's so, everything's so concentrated. Drivers do have personalities. They do have uh, lives. The professors and teachers, like the bus drivers, almost like they're in in my life because they made sure I got to college. They made sure I go to work now, and and it's it it goes accordingly how you treat people too. Well, smile to him. <laughs> okay, that's from another driver that's playing a joke here. Okay, but. This guy, he, you know, this guy right here, he does a lot of good for the for the drivers. Like every Monday, he brings uh, breakfast for everybody. We're gonna have breakfast real soon, really soon, all of us. And I'm gonna treat. Okay. <laughs> Today it's June gloom and it's May. It's coming a little early and it's staying a little late. We don't know why all these things are happening. So the least I could do is take the bus. And it's 50 cents because I'm a senior. It's a deal. <laughs> Many, many, many dreams. Um, I'm sure I wanted to be president at one time. <laughs> All my dreams came true. I was able to travel states playing ball, uh, visit all the major league baseball parks. I've had every good thing that I could hope to come true did. But mostly because I made it. And of course the dream job was to be the first anchor woman in the United States. There was nobody else to look at and say, oh, I'm going to be like her. They just weren't, it was all men. And so I felt that by being in the news and thinking about the news and reporting carefully that I was actually doing a community service. Very often, the people I was to interview were difficult. They were challenging. And I remember when Eisenhower came to town, I was assigned to go interview him. One of my first interviews, he was the same way. I'm not going to be interviewed by that girl. So I didn't get the interview. And I realized that I was going to have to, to overcome that. Here was when I first got hired, and that they wanted to promote the fact that they had a woman. And this is my wonderful colleague. Oh, I had worked with marvelous men who really, I mean, it'd make a better story to say, you know, we fought all the time and I was always grinding my teeth and crying in the ladies' room, but I wasn't. I had support, but I had to learn. I think they supported me when they saw I was hardworking. And what helped me get my job, I believe, was having parents who uh, told me I could do anything I wanted, I could be anything I wanted. It 
it all goes into your parents. Because, you know, my dad got sick, you know, and my mom, my mom's health wasn't all that great neither, right? But my mom, you know, she took care of my dad to the end, okay? And, you know, that's got to be the sweetest thing. Came out here for a vacation and ended up with a tumor. Uh, I'll make it. I got 29 years of work, so now I can retire. If I had one piece of advice, I'd hang around with people that are doing things instead of people that are not doing things because uh, you only imitate your atmosphere. You got to know the difference between uh, good and bad. You see, I was a bad person for many years. I was like robber, pickpocket, thief, shoplifter, womanizer, terrible. I have four wives many girlfriends. I'm terrible. Try and stop your mind without drinking or drugs. Don't use drugs. Don't smoke. Eat good food. Be a vegetarian. I've been on disability for a long time because uh, I'm also a, a hemophiliac, which is a person with a bleeding disorder. I actually got HIV from blood products years ago, 1982. Hemophilia destroys the joints, and uh, that, that limits my ability to move around. So I ride the bus to do volunteer work. Uh, to volunteer work at the Pacific Pride, doing needle exchange, and then go into public television to, to learn uh, TV and broadcasting. Actually, I came to support another friend who was riding across country, a fellow hemophiliac with HIV and hepatitis C. He was riding his bicycle across country, and in the process, he was honoring people that he knew who had died. I'm looking for a way to gain trust and financial support for people outside the pharmaceutical industry, and that's why I'm asking you, can we do better? I've been so strangely fortunate to live this long. You know, I felt, for one, I felt guilty because I'm, I'm a survivor, I'm a, a slow progressor, I, and I've had the privilege of going without treatment up until only a year ago I accepted treatment. And, you know, I thought I was going to die a long time ago. I was told that I was going to die a long time ago. And I've sat at so many bedsides, and mainly the most motivating bedsides that I've sat at and watched people take their last breath it was, was a 10-year-old boy named Rocky Alvarez. Watching him die did something to me. Para llegar aquí no fue fácil, uh, porque siempre vienes con el miedo y luego además a, a, mí, me, a, los, a mí me agarraron la primera vez y luego me tuvieron como casi dos días ahí detenida porque la persona que nos traía no quería confesar que era el, el, que, nos, el que pasaba gente. Y en parte sí también fue miedo porque cuando entramos ahí, pues para empezar nos separaron. Mi amiga, a mi amiga la dejaron salir y ahí pues empiezan a comentarte, no, es que a veces te detienen hasta un mes, es que a veces te detienen 20 días. Entonces yo como que se estaba con el miedo. Cuando nos llevaron a corte me pusieron esposas, estas que van acá y que corren hacia los pies. Entonces eso también fue muy difícil para mí. Yo dije, bueno, ni en cuántos años llevo en México y nunca me lo habían hecho y aquí. 
Dije, no he hecho nada malo, o sea. Y como ellos siempre nos dicen que nosotros estamos haciendo algo malo, entonces eso fue como para mí la parte más difícil. Porque sentí como que me... Como si me hubiesen pisoteado. Entonces dije, pues si no quieren que esté allá, ahora voy para allá. Entonces en lugar de regresarme, de primero sí, pero cuando me dijo mi hermano, no te va a pasar más nada, no va a pasar otra cosa. Mi amiga al final se terminó regresando y la que se vino fui yo. La que se vino fui yo. Pero uh, ya esa segunda vez pues pasé. Ya estaba, ya llegué y ya. It's a little overwhelming to think about the environment on top of everything else that I think about because then I start thinking about who's responsible for polluting the environment. Of course, you know, I want an environment for my grandchildren that are safe. The idea that, that, that they could have drinking water that would hurt them. I wish I knew what the answers were. You know, the older I get, the less answers I have. So my world kind of shrinks into figuring out where I can make the biggest difference. Sometimes I feel like a little kid. You know, if I'm in too much pain and things like, you know, pharmaceutical companies aren't doing what I want, the school system's not doing what I want, people are being mean or hurting people I care about, and there's nothing I can do about it, then I don't want to be here. And then there's times when, you know, I can really embrace the beauty of life, so. Live your life in such a way that if everyone lived as you do, the world would be a better place. It's really not going to affect me in my lifetime, but it will affect you, it will affect my grandchildren, it will affect young people throughout the world. Not just here in Santa Barbara, but what I choose to do will have ramifications for the environment throughout the world. And that's what we all have to think in terms of being part of the, the community of the world.